Over to you, Ophelia. Yeah, just a sec. Okay. Last words in the circles? Oh wait, we have, start, we have to start, don't we? Okay. Okay. Told off our offsets if you're not starting. Uh, yeah, but it's your class, go. Let's watch us. I'll start with some. I saw us. No, 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 Ten Jordan Suki and ten Chudan Suki. Do they count? Each. 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 Oh. Look. Each. At. Two. Two. Each. Each. That. He. Go. Look. Each. At. See my legs, can you? Mm. Next, we shall move on to some blocks. So we're going to do Oshuke and Kaishin. So we'll start with from Kaisoku to Dangamai. We're going to do 10 Uchu Keizuki. On, on each side, and then alternating sides each time, and then we're going to do 10 Wow Kizuki, Zigakumake Jinzuki, and finally, we are going to, yeah, we'll, we'll just start with those two. Do the count. First, Uchu Kizuki, and then Wow Kizuki. Each. Dan, si, ko, dok, chit, at, du, du, 
Technique which is orange to green, Alex's syllabus, right? Is oh, wait, you've already done that, Oshu, haven't you? I'm really confused now. Where am I? Anyway, wherever we were at, no, your green belt. Oh, right, sorry, forgot about that. Anyway, this is shift this one, you're shifting your weight back, you're doing the exact same thing, you're making this shape, but you're going to make it backwards. So, turning your forward shoulder, the shoulder that was already front. Turning even more front. So you're almost sideways on, covering and kicking. Okay. Exact same thing, but you're going backwards instead. This is Ushiro Rushige. We'll do five and then we'll swap sides and do five on the outside. Do the count. Eight. Ni. San. Chi. Oh. Oh. Oh, sorry. Go back to the area. Six again. Look. Sit. That's. Two. Two. Yes. Good. We got the boring ones out of the way. Now we've got fun stuff. Fun stuff left. So we shall start with Kai Shinzuki. So from Hidari Midari Gamai. Kai. So from Midari Gamai, your hand, your front hand is in Chiji Gamai like usual. You're a bit more square on. And this hand of Shiji in a fist is going to cover Suget. You're going to co cover your flowing ribs. Like you would in for Sabami Gayash, your back hand is doing that, and your front hand is in Shijigamai. From this, someone's going to come in with an attack to the head, because that's what this dance says. You're covering your body, you're not covering anything up here, saying, so go there, go for that one. This, go, for, go for this bit here. As they come in for a punch, you're going to sweep up, hook, and pull this down. And at the same time as you're doing this, and then we're hooking up, so it's a bit like a wow okay? but you're going to hook on. It's going to be a bit more fluid, and you're going to bring it down to your hip again. As you're doing that, this hand, you're going to come forward and punch them in the face. You're going to be dragging them into their in, into your fist. It's a bit like what we were doing the other day. This this idea of stepping through and having them just impale themselves on your fist. Similar idea. You're just sort of putting your fist there and then dragging them into it. So we'll do uh, to the count, covering your head, 
I'm punching. Eight. Nine. Ten. Y van a seguir ahí. Ya está. Toc. Six. Ach. Pip. Don't worry too much if, this, if you're struggling with this because it is on the brown to black syllabus. So it is quite possible it's the first time you're seeing it, which is fine. Uh, we're going to go really quickly to these. These are actually some of my favorite techniques, which funnily enough are the ones left over because this is the recap. Uh, this is the most, this is one of my favorite techniques just because it's a bit weird and a bit quirky. From Hidari Taikigamai. No, I think. So this is, this technique is called Chidori Gayash. It's a bit boring to do a single form because you're going to kick someone in the back of the leg so they fall down and they're going to roll out this, which looks very cool. It's not going to look very cool when you do it. But what's going to happen is they're going to step through and they're going to attack, you, attack through to your face with the front hand. As they do, you're going to do like you would, you're going to start out like you did for Sabami Gayash, covering your face. But Sabami Gayash is on the inside, this time you're on the outside. So there's no point in going for the neck. Instead, you're going to go for a backhand punch straight away. And now you're actually quite close to them. So you're just going to bring your back leg in and you're going to kick the back of their leg. Stop to get your leg, we're just doing it. It's quite a low kick, you're not kicking very high. You're going for the back of their leg. You're kicking this sort of, you're kicking them along their hamstring essentially. So to keep it quite low, you're just going to kick down. And then you're going to come back up and return to Taki Gumai. Go through it slowly. So they're coming in with the attack, you step off the line. Uchuke, Gakuzuki, back leg comes in, sock to Gary. And this time a little bit faster to the count, a bit more fluid. Each. Ni. I realised I forgot something. As you're covering, there isn't nothing. You are still doing the same movement, but because you don't have a neck, you're going to make sure you do them instead. So you're going for the eyes. So it's the same Sabami Gash movement going across. Make she, and then you punch them, and then you kick them. I thought I was forgetting something, it didn't seem right. From each again. Each. Knee. Done. She. Oh. Here I go to Migi. Thank you very much. Come on. Lock. Eight. Eight. Any questions? Yes. Questions? No? None? None? Okay. Good. Moving on to the last thing in my list, I think. Uh, and by far the most complicated. So we're doing, oh maybe not. So, 
Oshiyuke Zuki we were doing the other day. So this is when someone comes in with Furizuki and you're rocking outwards, opening up your chest, cutting straight out like well, okay. But this time you go to the side, you have to remember to lean into it as you're doing it. And we did Uchi Oshu Kazuki, Oshu Kazuki. We did Sato Oshu Kazuki. I think I've got this the right way around now. From which is here, and then you're punching on the inside. And we also did Oshu Kagari. Um, so Sato Oshu Kagari, which is coming across. Stepping through and kicking straight. Um, let me check my notes. Give me two seconds. So I got them the wrong way around. But anyway, Soto, so we got Soto, Shuke, Gary. And the last, the ones that we missed that time were these Uchis. So Soto, Shu, Uchi, Soto, Oshi, Uchi, Soto, Oshi, Uke, Gary, Uchi. Uchi version is, there's two versions, there's the Ura and the Amate. And the difference is one is you're moving onto your front leg, the other one you're moving onto your back leg. And because these are kicks, you want to implement what we were talking about the other day as well about your weight distribution. If you're about to kick with your front leg, then at the start of the technique, that's where your weight wants to be. Sounds counterintuitive, but you should essentially have all your weight on the leg that is going that is later going to kick. So for the Ura, for the Amate version, you're going to come, you're going to do a hand tension step. So you're going to step across or run around. So from here, you're going to come forwards. You're going to cut or shoot here. And from there, you're going to kick. There's two versions. You can either do a Junzuki or if you've turned too much, Sotogeri. Oh, sorry, Jun Gary or Sotto Gary. Uh, so it's then time to go back to kick with this front leg. That's where our weight wants to be. The reason, want, the reason I want to do that is I need to position this back leg. So if I'm going to kick, we'll do it. If we do it together slowly a couple of times, I'm going to start with your weight on your front leg. You're going to come in, you're going to pivot around, block, lift your weight, kick. And reset. Do it again, weight on your front leg. Comes in with the attack, block, turn around, Dr. Gary. To the count. Eight. Knee. Bent. Oh. Good. The second version of this technique, when you're coming to, this time you're coming towards your back leg. And you're doing, it's, this is a similar footwork to Haruki Gary, if, someone, if anyone remembers this. So it's this kind of footwork, but this time with a block. So you're, this time your back hand is coming across blocking. And this time, what was your what was your back leg? It's good to kick. So again, since your back leg is about to kick, you want your weight on your back leg as you start. This leg is going to come, pull back, turn out. So you're almost in a bit of a ballet position. From here, shift your weight across and kick. So this side, say Jun Gary. So do a couple together, slowly, attack comes in, shifting backwards, block, kick. And again, attack comes in, front leg shifts backwards, block, kick. Do a couple to the count, each. Knee. Oh. Actually, 
there to the other side. Doing the same thing again. So starting with back leg kick. What were we just doing? So the attack comes in this time to the, from the other side. Your front leg pulls in. Block with your back arm. Kick with your back leg. So for this, you want your weight to be on your back leg as you start. Do the count. Each. Knee. Stand. Feet. Four. Look. Oops. A little bit farther. Uh, she's going to do five. And then from back to the first one that we were doing. So this time the attack comes around this way. You're going to bring your back leg across behind your front leg. And you're going to add a Jun Gary, or if you've turned a lot, Sock to Gary. So for this, you want your weight to start on your front leg. So with a count, eight, knee, and feet. Yes. How did that feel, guys? Any questions? Nothing confusing? Kavita Sensei, anything to add? Uh, so I think the last couple that you did, I love the last couple, um, although I, I don't know how it works in this family now that it's got frizuki in it and not a straight punch, but it's exciting. Um, but I'm interested in keeping balance after you finish the technique. So I'm so used to this technique going straight into, doesn't make any sense why I'm still a ghost, but uh, maybe Ophelia can show us. But I can do. Effectively, you go straight into a Ranhanko for these ones. Mm -hmm. and, I find yeah, it, you would. and I find it really interesting trying to keep balance and come back straight into um, stance again. So I think it might be worth trying it with, we've got a few minutes, might be worth mm -hmm. it doing it with some round hand code. Okay, yeah we can do that. So uh, we'll do the first set that we did with hand tension going across. Dr. Gary, you can add a round hand code choice. If you can't think of one, I'd say Joe, Chu, Marsha Gary. Or make your own. Whatever works for you. It needs to be at least three attacks. So from here, Dari. To the count. Eight. Knee. Stand. Feet. Going, go. Look. Sit. At. Good. Remember to make your block high enough. Someone is actually tucking your head. So your block needs to be way up here. Not down here. Covering your head. Here I see to Migi. She's your eye. And same technique again with Ren Eight. D. 
Vas-y. Qui Bon. Donc. Vite. Sure, what I'm going to do today for the hour, but are we going to make it up as we go or not? Uh, one of the things, so there's two things that I've been thinking about. We'll see if I get into the second one. But aspects of the philosophy that I've been thinking about recently, especially as Kivita and I have been planning this self defense course that we're hopefully doing as soon as lockdown ends, is the idea of like of what we teach when we teach self defense and what is the sort of what self-defense can Kempo actually give you? Because quite often, if you're going to get attacked, if you uh, the idea that you're going to get attacked on the street, you won't be able, I mean, there's no way that we can teach you every single aspect that you will need to defend yourself. Now, Kimita, that's hilarious because I have everything but your face. <laughs> it's, just, it's sort of inverted at the moment. You keep talking, I'll fix it. Okay. The, um, there's no way that we can prepare you for every single scenario that, has, that happens. And I think I have, so has Kavita been in, uh, in scenarios where, where you're under threat, where someone's trying to, to provoke you or to attack you. And in my experience, I've never, I haven't, the, the only sort of, the only Kempo that I've used was the idea to sort of stay calm, the, the Heijoshin. And I've talked about this with, with other people who do, Kempo, and a lot of them have said the same thing. They said that rather than the physical, uh, the physical things that you've learned from Kempo, the kagite and the punching, you, the idea to stay calm and to analyze the situation are much more are skills that they are for, feel far more likely to use in a self-defense scenario. So that was my take on that. I don't know if anyone Kavita has any ideas on that or anything to add. No, I think that's a good summary. Uh, so, so the other one that I've heard people say a lot is the the rolling. Ukemi is one of the things that people use most. Yeah, oh yeah, I heard lots of stories about people who've who've like quick tempo, they're not camping for ages, and then at some point they fell off a bike, and they did a myokemi. I I think I did I think I did wake to a bird at some point. <laughs> was it trying to poop on you? It was. It flew into my face. It was a pigeon, and it flew very close to me. And I said, <laughs> but most of, of the Kempo skill, I've never had to actually use Kempo in real life. I hope none of you ever have to use Kempo in real life, other than not going in there to that bar. And I think that's far. That's a lot of what we learn as well. It's when we can and can't handle ourselves. Yeah, you don't mean, oh my god, Kavita's in that bar, I'm not going in it. You, you mean something else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a really, there are some really shady people in that bar. Yeah. Kavita might be one of them. Mm, exactly. <laughs> what was your other thing? So the other thing I've been thinking about, uh, lockdown has made me think about the sort of, the idea of 
of living half and half for yourself and half for others in terms of I think in relation to everyone else so I've seen everyone go into this like half half for other half for yourself half for other stage and especially in lockdown I think it's quite it it's very hard to to balance them when we're in such extreme conditions so I see a lot of people either go I need to help everyone that's how I'm that's how I feel better and quite a lot of the lockdown I felt that way I felt a lot more I've felt better about myself and I felt healthier when I was helping others and I felt in some ways that that was caring for myself but I've also seen in a lot of people who are very close to me the opposite I've seen them go I have to care for myself therefore shut down like this this is the most important and either is wrong I think I've sort of had a lot of time to contemplate with this Alex knows because I've talked to her about this on multiple occasions at this point because it's I think it's it's also bothered me personally that the way sort of some people react and uh, because everyone will react in different ways everyone will handle this kind of lockdown in different ways so it's sort of and I've handled it in different ways on different days and so the way how you live for yourself and live for others I think um, I think they're quite interconnected I haven't quite come to a conclusion about where I'm going with this talk I wanted to see what you guys think about about what your thoughts on half yourself you're muted but go ahead so sensei daniel um wants me to translate he says sometimes it's better to protect yourself to avoid difficult uh, situations in conflict okay hey, thank you daniel this is because the, the sound is not is not good enough. Mm. So I need the uh, Daniel for translate the ideas. And happy happy birthday, Ophelia. Thank you. <laughs> yes, talking about living half for yourself and half for others. Should we unless you've got more you want to add, Ophelia? No. Did we did we all get the memo? So we we have this memo. I have cake. Huh? <laughs> there, you <go. laughs> there you go. So I don't know what happens. Are we going to sing at this point? Yes. Yeah. No. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Huh? I think we should sing to Ophelia. Great. So Sneha, lead the charge. This is going to be super weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That was great. We don't need to do it twice. We're not washing our hands, right? Arigato, Ophelia, Renshu, oh, what a bus. Excellent stuff. I'm going to stop recording.